So I better get on with it. Uh, so uh, this talk is on um, flown on the UK Na National Health Service, as you can tell from the first slide. Um, we work, we've been working with the NHS for a few years in the UK, and um, this particular talk is about uh, one project that we've done, which is uh, uh, an intranet for um, the merger of two departments. Uh, so who am I? Uh, my name is Ben Ackland. Um, I work at NetSite in the UK. Um, I've been working with Zopen Plone since 2002. I started at NetSite as a developer, and I've, um, I've, I've uh, been working with the company and managing a number of projects. Um, and in particular, I've worked on a number of business intranet um, kind of style portals and information portals for uh, both uh, public sector and also private sector. So the purpose of this talk is to give you a bit of background um, on two departments within the NHS, CFH and IC. Uh, talk to you about some of the consultancy that we did with the NHS. Uh, talk to you about this particular intranet that we worked on. Give you a quick demo, of course, and then uh, wrap up and, uh, and focus on the future. So I start off with the information center. So this is one department in the massive organization that is the NHS. The information center have been traditionally Microsoft based. Uh, so they're an IT department in a, in a, in a huge organization. Um, so they, we, they've been using Microsoft products for, for years and uh, they've got a Windows environment. Uh, but they considered using Plone in 2006, and um, they uh, consulted with NetSite, and uh, we worked with them to build a really simple portal at that time, uh, based on Plone 2, I think, uh, which was primarily intended uh, to be used as an internal communications tool and for file sharing, so things like news, in internal communications within the organization. Um, but I believe, uh, unfortunately, the project ne never, really, never really gained momentum and never really got signed off in the end and, and delivered to, um, to, to the users. I think there was quite a, a change in staffing at that time, and unfortunately, the person that commissioned the project uh, didn't see it through. Uh, but at that point, they were at least aware of Plane, and um, they'd seen what Plane can do. Ultimately, it was superseded by SharePoint um, system a couple of years later using SharePoint 2007. So some of the uh, comments on that SharePoint portal um, were that it had poorly constructed navigation. Uh, we hear quite often that the interface for SharePoint is quite unappealing. It can be quite, um, quite sort of uh, information dense, and, and um, there was a large amount of information in the existing uh, system that they had, and it was in quite a flat structure. I think maybe that's reflective of the way that, that SharePoint installed information at that time. And I don't think users found the search was, was really usable at all. Uh, found it very hard to find information, or at least these are the points that were fed back to us on the, on the original system. So I've got a screenshot here. It's not showing that well on the projector, but you can get a feel for both the uh, visual style of this portal. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty simple. There's obviously key navigation at the top, and get a feel for some of the information in there. Um, and you can see... Um, you know, the, 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 there's not an awful lot of hierarchy there. There's obviously some grouping of information, but, um, you know, it's limited. So uh, now I'll talk about the other department that I want to mention within the organization. This is Connecting for Health. So they went away and adopted Plone by themselves. They downloaded Plone, they installed it, um, and they started building their public websites with it. And uh, they developed uh, numerous bits of code to do whatever you would want to do on a public website. And, um, and then they came to NetSite um, asking us really to provide ongoing support and to do some sort of more bespoke development for them, so to, to keep things going. Um, and that amounted to about 30 days per annum and, and that contract's still in place for, uh, with that department. So towards the end of uh, last year, uh, the NHS, I mean, reflecting on the, the, the last few years of economical change, the NHS has had a massive um, uh, sort of revision in the UK, um, and uh, ultimately it led to these two departments, CFH and IC that I just talked about, um, merging in the organization. So you've got one department that's using Plone for public websites, one department that's sort of heard of Plone, but ultimately using SharePoint for their, their existing information portal. 
And you've got a large number of redundancies and uh, a massive change in people, in, in uh, hierarchy within the organization. So, you know, the restructuring really is, is resulting in a lot of change. And the result of those two departments merging um, is this new department, catch, catchily titled HSCIC, uh, Health and Social Care Information Center. So, the new department's been, uh, been established and they need, to, uh, they need to revisit all their information. They need a new portal within their organization to share that information. So, obviously, they've got that existing SharePoint system, but you know, SharePoint 2007 is a bit, I think it's fair to say, behind the times now. Um, the information architecture really didn't support the new uh, department or the new structure of the organization, so it really needed a thorough review. And um, I see, I think, that uh, the, the, the department that adopted Plain for their websites is, uh, you know, wants to consider non-Microsoft technology, wants to consider open, some more open source technology in the organization. And I think what's key here is this one portal should be the one central place for communicating the merge of departments, making sure information is available to people as they're going through a fairly uh, substantial uh, change. So they initially went out and um, spoke to a consultancy uh, company uh, which, who were contracted to engage with the stakeholders of the, uh, the, put the new portal, assess business requirements, um, and they recommended SharePoint 2010, uh, which is fine. I mean, I think it you know, did a lot of, a lot of the, offered a lot of the features that they required. Um, but the comments that we later heard having uh, talked to, to uh, HSCIC was that this report really was quite a limited review of the content. They didn't really focus on the content. They, they primarily focused on the features required and matched those features up with SharePoint. And I think it was felt that the likely cost to, to get the features that they, they were after would be um, substantially higher than the budget they had available. And still, um, I see, you know, convinced that um, the NHS should look at other solutions other than SharePoint. So uh, then uh, this department came to, came to NetSite and, uh, and for a second round of consultancy. So we spent some time on site with, uh, with the various stakeholders again. Um, we went through some card sorting exercises to try and refine the uh, list of requirements. Um, and that's from both a functional and a content point of view. So what information do people need? What do they want to do with the portal? And we went through some brainstorming exercise to, to really get a good feel for the critical day one functionality and information required. Got a couple of, uh, couple of images here. So you can see a bit of the card sorting going on there, some initial uh, information architecture, um, some key sections that were required. Um, and this is a brainstorming session on this idea of day one, day one pack, day one information, what do they need for day one and what surrounding information will support that. So to summarize the conclusions that came out of that consultancy, 75% of the information that they already had on, um, on their SharePoint portal was, was deemed primarily out of date actually, or unnecessary. And um, they realized that they only really needed 20% of those function features rather that they were looking in SharePoint to deliver 80% of their requirements on day one, 80% of their stakeholders' key requirements. For, for, the, for the launch of the new portal. So the resulting proposal that we put forward um, focused on this core content and this core functionality. And at this stage, we're still technology agnostic. Obviously, they realize NetSite work with Plone and Zope and Python, but uh, the, the, the proposal we put forward really focused on, on functionality and content uh, information architecture, not necessarily on the technology. So, then what they did is they asked us to, um, to go away and price up um, a potential project using Plone um, based on their, their list of desired features as a, as a waterfall style project. So line items, one item for each bit of functionality really. And um, we learned at that stage that still their budget was, was quite limited. You, re you know, really they, they, uh, they didn't have enough money to implement or, or deliver a solution, even based on Plone, with all the functionality that, they, that they'd hoped for. So obviously we started talking to them about a more iterative approach to, to building this portal. 
and um, obviously prioritizing as we go along to allow them to get something in place for day one, something that communicates the information that these members of staff need to do their jobs after this merger. And like many projects, we had quite a short time scale, so um, you know, we really wanted to focus on, on, on the important bits. And the outcome of all of this, there was obviously a lot of discussion and, 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 um, and prioritization, but the outcome of this was that, that they committed to 60 days of work with us, um, broken up into, into a small number of cycles. So the functionality they were looking for on day one. They wanted the, this new portal to be engaging. They'd had a lot of negative feedback on the existing system that they had in place. It was important that this looked good when it was launched. It was usable. It was clean. Um, users could get to the information they were looking for. And um, users, I think probably the second kind of requirement from a user's point of view was that, that this was one place to access things. They were sick of going to multiple sites to uh, get the information they need. Now, as you'll see in a minute when I go through the demo, the reality of bringing loads of different web services and systems and tools all into one place is, is a quite a complex one. Uh, so we ended up linking to, to, to the other sites, but at least it's a portal where they, they can find the things they're looking for, even if they have to go off somewhere else to perform the tasks they want to perform. So from an internal communications point of view, news, blogs, forums, um, uh, mechanisms to communicate out uh, what's going on in the inf in organization at time of change, and to give users a mechanism to, um, to feed back their opinion and, and share their thoughts, really. We want easy access for the sort of 2,000 or so users in, the, in this new merged department. So we're looking for, to use single sign-on against, um, against Active Directory in this case. And uh, we want to keep people in the loop. I think, as I keep saying, a lot of change going on, lots of information, lots of communication going out as things are happening. We want people to be subscribed to that and receive some kind of batched um, information um, on, on, changing, on things that are changing and communication that's happening in the organization. And then that's all quite general. Department-specific information is also important. People want ownership over their own information, and they want a section of this portal where they can communicate more specific information, maybe focused on uh, IT or uh, HR or something like that. So another requirement that they had and that they were effectively fulfilling with, uh, with this file sharing uh, SharePoint uh, portal in place was, was some element of document management. So um, I'm sure there's no one here that disagrees that Plain is a great web CMS, um, but I think it's fair to say that SharePoint is a very good document management system. And you know, with things like Microsoft Office integration, you know, it is a very strong, uh, strong tool. So given the limited budget and the limited time we had available, um, we didn't really want to get into, do into, into heavy document management within, within Plain for, for this phase of the project. So we decided, why not keep SharePoint in place? Why not reference SharePoint? Why not allow users to search for documents from the Plone site, go to SharePoint to get that information at this stage, and then maybe down the line we can, we can make that experience better for them. And obviously using single sign-on makes it fairly easy to move between the two sites. Um, you know, you can be logged into the internet, search for a document on SharePoint, access that. And obviously the user profiles as well are shared across the two systems, so uh, that information is common as well. So I'll give you a quick demo. Uh, so um, just to give you a quick bit of background, this is obviously Plain 4. It's a fairly recent project. The project was completed at the end of uh, March this year. Uh, it doesn't look like Plain, of course. Um, so I'm just going to give you a run through of some of the core features. Uh, so we've landed on the home page here. Um, Obviously got top navigation, fairly clean, simple access to content. We've got a personal bar, just like you'd expect in, um, in most plain portals, and we've got the, uh, the search. Uh, and the search actually kicks off to, to, to SharePoint, um, if necessary. And then we've got, um, we've got sort of got three or four key areas on the home page, as you might expect, uh, highlighting uh, key information in the portal. So we've got these uh, very graphical, you know, imagery, as you'll see, is quite key through the whole portal. We've got this very graphical carousel here, um, advertising uh, key pieces of information as the uh, organizing, uh, organization was changing. 
Um, and then we use this spotlight area really, uh, this was to, um, to reference key, uh, key content, uh, including that day one pack and all of the things around the day one of the, of the changing organization. Uh, now you can see it's starting to be used for sort of more general, um, general policies and that sort of thing. Uh, so on the right-hand side, um, just a couple of things to mention really. The service updates, this box uh, is available throughout the, throughout the portal. So it's an area where you've got uh, call-outs to some key, uh, key updates. So you can see mostly they generally relate to things like security or, um, or bugs or things like that. Um, and then we've got a couple of areas in, that are familiar throughout the intranet that provide quick access to uh, other content. And this and other services. And this not, isn't necessarily within the internet, this might be elsewhere. Really, this portal is in place to give a familiar way to access um, all of the information that staff might require. Um, however, a lot of that is stored on other web systems. And some of it's still in the, uh, in the SharePoint DMS that I mentioned. Uh, so we've got these quick links on the right-hand side, and I'll just scroll back up to the top. We've also got this little apps and tools drop down uh, so users can get access to some key kind of applications and tools within their organization as well in terms of like WebEx, IT, um, room booking, all that sort of stuff. So in terms of what is actually um, executed by the Plone system, um, obviously we've got this content that I mentioned above. Um, the two key areas really are discussion forums and, um, and blogs. Um, so... Um, and they're both tied into the subscription system that we've got in place. So everyone's familiar with, uh, with the functionality of a forum. Uh, we've got a forum going on here. Obviously, we can, um, we can post a reply. Um, and um, you'll see I'm subscribed to this thread. I can unsubscribe from it if I want. And uh, users can basically go through this system and pretty much subscribe and unsubscribe from any content. Um, so I just have a quick look at the blogs as well. Um, so we've got one of the directors here um, uh, has got uh, posting regular blog posts. We've got uh, the most recent post here. We can comment on that post if we wish. Um, obviously, comments and things and forum discussion are all public uh, or uh, public to other users. Uh, we can find other blogs by that user, and we can obviously browse through the blogs. We can subscribe to this blog as well if we wish. And um, the subscriptions functionality. Uh, also applies to other content, things like um, comments on news stories and um, other areas of the system. Um, I've gone to the, uh, to the My Subscriptions page where I can manage my subscriptions, just to give you a quick idea of this functionality. Uh, we can batch up the subscriptions if we wish. Um, we can see which content we subscribe to and jump to it or unsubscribe. We can also see if we had any, if any, notifications are pending. Um, so, um, and, and we'll of course receive emails of those notifications in due course. So both blogs and forums really tie into this news section, uh, as do the banners on the home page. So internal communications, pushing out news to all of the, the sort of 2,000 staff in the organization. Uh, so we've got a landing page here for news, um, representing some general internal news and then some um, news specific to groups. So groups really, are the term that are is used to represent departments within the organization. So um, you'll see down the right-hand side here, we've got news by group. We've got a list of a variety of groups here. Um, and they're representing departments in the organization. Uh, so um, we'll just have a quick look into these, uh, these two, two areas of the organization. So all of the departments that are represented in the portal are broken up into sort of two, two sections. There's the internal services, and then there's the departments relating to what the NHS deliver. Um, so if we go to internal services, we get a nice, uh, very visual landing page here. Um, these uh, are all the various departments, and um, within these, you can see uh, some of the key content that's been highlighted. Uh, and I'll just show you how they manage that information as well. Um, so they go to this, um, this item of content here. Uh, so this is representing internal services as a whole. They can go to that piece of content. They can uh, choose the departments which are featured uh, from, from this uh, standard sort of um, dexterity field. Um, and, that, and the result of which is that um, we, we pull out those images and the titles and the, and the content. And so if we go into something like business services, that department has kind of a, a micro site in itself within the portal. So you can see here we've got latest news relating to business services. We've got 
uh, navigation for content in that area. They've got their own quick links re relevant to their, their um, members of staff and uh, obviously their own content. Um, and so obviously we can drill down to, um, to the final piece of content if we wish. Um, and throughout the, uh, throughout the intranet, we've got um, ratings functionality so people can feed back on the content just in a sort of anonymous yes and no, or, 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 or thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, or they can leave a comment which is sent to the, uh, to the content creator. Um, and so the last point to, uh, to just mention is, um, is the community, really. Um, we bring uh, the user profiles from Active Directory and we have um, a, a selection of, of users here. I think I've only got a limited number because I'm running it locally, perhaps. Um, but um, we've, got, um, we've got copies of all of their profiles from Active Directory. So um, obviously, when, uh, when a user makes a comment within a blog or posts a, posts a forum post or something like that, that's attributed to the user um, who has a profile in the system. Uh, so, from a technical point of view, really quickly, we're using um, we're using Diaso to theme uh, to theme this uh, portal. As I say, it's based in Plain Four. Um, we've used uh, a mix of um, some standard Plain functionality, um, some uh, collective products, I think, uh, and extensions, and we've also implemented a few other bits and bobs ourselves to um, to sort of bring everything together. Um, and um, from an authentication point of view, um, I'll mention in a minute, um, as I said, uh, we've got single sign-on. Obviously, I've logged into this manually here, but all users, they come to work, they open their web browser, they can go to this portal, they're immediately authenticated, uh, so they've got access to the information. Um, so uh, just a bit of feedback, really, from the project. Um, you can see there I've included a, a couple of lines of uh, comment from, from the project manager at the customer's point of view. But I think it's fair to say that, um, that the new portal went down very well. We've had, we've had a lot of positive feedback. Um, I think uh, we certainly met the original objectives of the portal, which, uh, which is, is, is really pleasing to, to hear. Um, we're getting 500, so 25% of the potential user base accessing it on a daily basis, which is excellent. And there's an awful lot of uh, user-generated content being created in the portal, things like uh, opinion you know, in terms of forum posts, uh, comments on blogs, that sort of thing. Um, and um, the customers committed to some further work as well, so we can continue that agile process now uh, to deliver improved functionality over the coming months. So the future. Um, I mentioned Titus SharePoint integration early on. It was uh, something which we, we, we always had in the back of our minds. What we'd really like to do is to have users of this portal only using the plain site. You know, we've got a nice looking site, a familiar user interface, um, a, a slick system that they can use. What we'd really like them to do, be able to do is find SharePoint content using the Plone search, download it directly without having to go to another website and another brow uh, browser window, and also have tighter referencing of content. So an art, uh, maybe a page or a news item in here can reference something in SharePoint, and things like permissions and URLs and things like that are all dealt with. Um, and um, on that note, uh, my colleague Matt Hamilton is going to be giving a talk on, um, on SharePoint integration. Um, so uh, if that's of interest, then, uh, then do stop by. Uh, secondly, the, most, uh, the sort of second thing on the agenda really is a responsive theme. So what I showed you there was a fixed width theme, 900 odd pixel width theme. Um, I'm sure you're all aware, you know, many people are picking up tablets these days and, and, and mobiles and using them in, in a business environment. Um, and, um, and despite the recession, the NHS appears to be doing the same. So they're looking for a uh, responsive theme to, to this information. So users can get this on their mobile devices, really. And, you know, tablets aren't too much of a challenge, but obviously iPhones, smaller, smaller screen uh, mobile devices are. So um, we, uh, in the next couple of months or so, we're going to be uh, deploying a, a responsive theme that we've been working on this year for, for intranets and, and deploying that for them. So a really quick mention of NetSite and intranets. Um, in a more, more uh, general context, we've been working on business portals for a number of years. Um, and I think um, intranets in particular are becoming a focus. Uh, we've got a lot of, um, a lot of uh, knowledge there and experience in, from a consultancy point of view in terms of deploy, deploying uh, the right fit for an organization uh, from, a, from an information sharing point of view. 
Um, and as I say there, you know, consultancy is as important as development. On a lot of projects, we spend, you know, at least a third of the time consulting and managing a project as opposed to doing software development. Um, it's certainly fair to say that Pl Plone is a strong contender when it comes to integrating multiple systems. I think theming in particular, you know, we've had a lot of success with using um, Diazo and other technologies to uh, theme uh, various sites and also mix uh, HTML from multiple sites and theme that. And from our business point of view, um, intranets and, and, and Plone coupled together is, is an exciting area for us. And I think the, the SharePoint, um, SharePoint thing is, is also very interesting. So real quick mention, uh, we're hiring at the moment and if um, you're uh, a Plone developer or you're um, involved in Plone, and in particular if you've got experience in, um, in intranets, then, then we'd love to hear from you if you'd be interested in working with us in, uh, in Bristol. Um, do, do have a look at the site or grab one of us. Uh, so that's it. I've got a couple of minutes, I think. Thank you. Questions? How did you get to, uh, get to talk to the people at NHS after they decided not to go for SharePoint initially? Why did they, yeah. did they come to you? I think uh, it, it, it all reflects on that support contract we had in place. So they uh, were paying us for 30 days a year just to build bespoke Devel uh, plane development for their public sites. So we would maybe integrate Flickr or integrate something, you know, video or something. And we had a really good relationship from that support. And, you know, we've been doing that for a few years. So the guys that we were working with there, you could see that Plane was working for them. They picked up Plane. They chose Plane themselves originally. Um, and really, the, they, re they were reflecting uh, when, the, when they were merging departments and starting to talk to this Microsoft-based IT team, they were saying, look, these guys have been working with us. You, know, you, you, sh you, should, you, should, you should speak to them before you make any major decisions. And I think that's really how we got that opportunity to move that forward. Yeah, sure. Um, did they also talk to them, to the, the, the SharePoint party the same? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, they went through, as I say, they went through a consultancy phase with a, a Microsoft-oriented consultancy company, and they suggested SharePoint 2010. I don't know what happened after, after that. I don't know if you can elaborate, Matt. Yeah. That's true. So maybe they, maybe the point was they, they didn't have the budget to go out to an external agency. They did some of the implementation themselves with SharePoint for the document management. I didn't really understand what Matt was saying, so maybe I'm repeating. Um, did I get this right that they more or less chose NetSide but not Plone? So they rather chose the consultancy company and not the system? That, that's the, Mm -hmm. I think to a degree that's fair to say. I think uh, it's worth bearing in mind that they were already using Plone to a degree, as I mentioned. So I think there was, there was obviously an understanding of Plone as a technology and that it would be a potential solution. But I think the organization as a whole had a, initially had a stronger preference for, for the Microsoft solution and, the, and that had been suggested by the other consultancy. Um, but I, as I reflecting on what I just said, I think the relationship that we built up with them certainly was an important part of that. And I think, um, yes, to a degree, I think uh, they did. They did potentially, you know, choose. Yes, there was NetSite was a key part of that because we know how to bend the 
tool to, to fit what they wanted. But I think that the fact that we had a very flexible tool to use won over the yeah. Yeah, I think I've got to finish soon, but. I'm not sure I've got time to answer that. I think uh, very briefly, I would say um, that we, that looking at the early consultancy work that they'd done, it was clear that it was all kind of molded around using SharePoint. And I think we observed that and we said, you know, let's let's step away from the technology initially and just look at what they actually need to do with this portal. And um, and, and reflecting on your question a minute ago, I think that's kind of why they, they almost chose the, the consultancy before the technology. Obviously, they knew we were going to suggest Plone if they could stay with us for the technology. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got to wrap up. Can I ask one quick question? Could you put your hand up if you have deployed an intranet with Plone of any kind? Okay. Thank you. Just to get feel. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, do grab me if you've got any other questions. Cheers.